Hey, this is Phil Diaz. I'm the pastor at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, and this is our podcast. I want to thank you for joining us today. It's my prayer that God would use this podcast to speak to your life right where you're at. I pray it also builds your faith and helps give you perspective on how God can work, move, and transform your life. Enjoy the message. Amen. Today's sermon is called Winning the Prize. How fitting is it that we have some prizes given away today for that? So how many of you enjoy winning prizes? Some of you who won a prize didn't raise your hand. (laughs) But let me tell you this, I am grateful for everyone who volunteered today in our games today. Most people, I think, are interested in prizes, amen, in one way or the other. In fact, the word prize is often another uh, name or synonym for the word reward. And everybody likes a reward, don't they? We all love the little trinkets and all of the items that we can win at times. Um, you know, and the thing of it is, uh, even the Apostle Paul, we're going to read about, he was interested in prizes as well. Uh, his prize that he was interested in um, was, of course, of great value. In fact, it's of supreme value. It's probably a little bit more than what you would win on a game show or even the Hoosier Lottery or bingo, whatever your preference is on some of those things. We'll talk about that later. (laughs) But anyway, I just simply want to say this, that the greatest prize of all we have here today, and that is the gift of Jesus Christ. Let's give him praise for that church. Amen. And in fact, that prize is something that you can also go home and take with you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's stand once more for the reading of the word. Uh, We're going to be in the book of Philippians. We're going to be in chapter three. We're going to look at two verses today. Only two verses. I get a little chuckle. That's okay. But two verses is what we have today that we're going to dig into. Philippians chapter three, verse 13 through 14. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, Brothers and sisters, that's you, me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Woo! I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads today for the receiving of this word. Heavenly Father, we just ask that, Lord, you continue to fill the room, Lord, with the worship and praise of who you are. Uh, Father, we pray at this time that you open up this message to our hearts and minds. Help us to receive this message and help us, Lord, to be able to, um, Lord, see if there's a place within our heart and within our lives, Lord, that we just need to give more fully and surrender to you. Um, We pray this in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 You guys may be seated. So today we celebrated our 105th birthday. Woo! Amen. Yeah. (laughs) You know how many churches start up and they don't even get past year three? Year four? 105 years, church. Yeah. Give God praise. So with that in mind today, I'm just reminded about what Paul is speaking of. And here in the church, we have all kinds of history to look back upon. In fact, I didn't even drag everything that we have to celebrate our history out with, because I would probably need two or three more tables worth of stuff. And we have precious memories with all of that. Some of you probably even grew up in this church. How many of you grew up in this church? Raise a hand. Yeah, there you go. So, with all of that said, the fact of it is that we're here 105 years as a testimony to the hand of God working and moving in this church, within its history, and within its life. Give God praise. Woo! And today I stand here humble and grateful. I stand here humble and grateful for every single person that ever stepped in the church to volunteer, to be a board member, to teach a Sunday school class, to clean the toilets. 
for every single person who ever shuffled their feet and used their hands to pick up something to do something for the kingdom. I'm grateful for Phil's dad who used to drive that bus. <laughs> yeah, I'm grateful for so many and all of you here today. And so I just simply want to say thank you. Thank you. And I want to give you a little applause here today. No, I'm not tapping the mic. I'm trying to clap my hands. <laughs> but I give God praise for you. I give God praise for every person. Thank God that he's a way maker, isn't he? Amen. Amen. And I praise God for his love, his truth, and his grace, and his mercy within this place. Now, as we look at the text today, I'm going to kind of go through this very quickly. But my first point is this. It's in verse 13. My first point is Paul's past and the prize. That's my first point. Paul's past and the prize. Because as we talk about the text in verse 13, it says, forgetting what is behind and straightening towards what's ahead. Now, some of you might be, well, wait a minute. We just are celebrating our history. We're super pumped about it. What about our past? Well, yes, we did. We celebrate that. And there's nothing wrong with celebrating and reflecting on what God has done, how he's worked and moved in our life. So what exactly is Paul saying here? What Paul is saying here is that he was determined to not be hindered by his past. He was determined to not be hindered because his past was not going to determine the outcome of what was ahead. Amen? In fact, for some, the past for you are the good old days. How many of you remember the past as the good old days when gas was less than a dollar? <laughs> You could go to the grocery store and come with a hundred bags of stuff instead of one or two. All right. The good old days when soda pop tasted better. And it was in a bottle. I don't know. But for some of you, the past is not the good old days. For some of you, the past is filled with trauma and abuse and hurt, and neglect and a whole host of pain. And for some of you, the past is what you continue to live out in your life every day because you've refused to change and you've refused to see what's ahead of you. And the church holding on to the past is honestly one of the things that always comes up in conversations with ministers. And all denominations and circles of faith have this. You know, it's, it's like the famous old saying is, Man, my church, they were so tore up because we took a vote on the, the new color of the carpet because we're trying to change carpet. But you've got people that want to keep the old carpet because their kids puked on it and they love that puke stain that's on the carpet. It reminds them of that. Um, you know, it's silly, some of those things. But the thing of it is, Paul, in his passage here, he was determined not to be hindered by the past. Paul had his life in the past in two phases. Phase one, he wasn't even Paul. Phase one, he was known as Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus. And in phase one, his confidence was in his flesh. In phase one, he had a hatred of Jesus. In phase one, he also had a hatred of those who served Jesus and called themselves the church. And in so in phase one, he would murder and kill Christians. That's what he did. That was phase one. But then, God got a hold of him, amen? And so we all know the Damascus Road story. And so Paul was the new man. Because God told him to change his name. You're not now going to be known as Paul. But even as Paul, Paul had a, a, a past of sorts as Paul. Because Paul could look back on his past as being a minister in this sort of way. He could look grandly on all of the accomplishments that he had up to this point in ministry. In fact, look at all the churches that he founded through his ministry, okay? 
I mean, I think almost all of the modern day churches are because of the work that Paul did while he was there in being an apostle. And, I mean, Paul could also talk and boast about all of the sufferings that he had in ministry because he suffered greatly for the cause of taking the gospel. Some of you today have experienced uh, maybe some of the things that Paul went through. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you haven't been in jail for ministering to people about the gospel. But maybe you've been wrecked at the sea. But anyway, how could you blame Paul for thinking that he might have felt that he had done enough? How could you blame Paul that he might have thought they had done enough? The thing of it is, as he wrote this passage, he was determined not to look back because the prize had laid before him in the present. History is great. I love history. But the thing for the church today is that the prize isn't left in the past. The prize is still here and it is set before us. Amen? Amen. 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 The past is filled with great moments of God working, but the prize is still before us. Our own past and our own lives, whether it's a good memory or a bad memory, it doesn't matter because guess what? The prize is still before us. Amen. Give God praise for that. So as we talk about the prize, my second point is this. Paul had a passion for this prize. Oh, he was reaching for the prize. Some of you are reaching out today for those prize baskets that you won. And Paul was stretching himself in every way possible to keep inching toward the prize. He sees every opportunity to serve. He felt like he has to give it his all because anything less was not enough. And so Paul's passion was this, is to accomplish the will of God within his life. Let me ask you this, church. When was the last time that you checked in with God in prayer, asking him, concerning him about his will for your life. Because the one thing that doesn't change even as we get older is seeking out what, Lord, would you have me to do? What is your will, Lord? And I think sometimes what happens is we get older and older and we rely more on ourselves. We rely more on our own sensibilities. We rely more on what's on the news feed that's coming up. We rely so much on some other things. Sometimes we forget to even ask God, what would you have me to do, Lord? Amen? Amen. Amen. Because Paul's passion for the prize was cemented in that he was looking for that missing person that he could talk to, that he could witness to, that he could show the power of the gospel message to. This message that Jesus of Nazareth had brought forth. This message that was revolutionary, that was cemented in all of the promises of God. It was all here in the person of who Jesus was. And what did Jesus do? Jesus not only reached out to people and ministered to people, but he did something for you and me that was so unique. And I'm never going to apologize for preaching about the cross and the blood of Jesus in a service. I'm sorry. Amen. 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 So if I talk about it every service, I'm sorry. There's other churches that don't. <laughs> But I'm not going to apologize about it because that's the reason why I'm here today. Right. Is what Jesus did on the cross. One of the most powerful moments in our prayer service, uh, I know for me, is going to this back cross. I know some of you wonder, well, why is this still up? But I kind of like to have it up, at least on a Sunday service. Because what that represents is the things that I need to lay down before the Lord. There's these little rocks and pebbles that are over there and I write things that I need to lay down before the Lord and I, can't, I don't pick them back up. Right. And Paul's passion for Jesus was that he wasn't going to pick up his old life anymore. He wasn't going to go around trying to pick up the things that God had told him he needed to change and be transformed in. He had a passion for the prize. He had a purpose in his life. What's your life's purpose? And don't say, 
What your job is, is for your purpose. Because there's more to life than sometimes just our jobs and our work. What's your life's purpose today? You see, when you begin to think about what the prize is, the prize, of course, being Jesus, I want you to know today that you can have everything in this world, but without having the prize of Jesus Christ in your life, it's all worthless. Amen? Because there was only one prize in Saul's life that could change and transform him. One prize which took a man who used to be known as Saul, who used to kill Christians, but is now changed in his Paul. And now is trying to get more people to know Christ. And I don't know about you, but that's a prize that I want to strive for every day. Give God praise. He gives us the ability to do it. Amen. Amen. And so, my last point is this. Paul presses on towards the mark. And we see that in verse 14. Paul talks about the goal and the prize. But what is the mark? The mark is simply this. It's to be more like Christ. Say that to your neighbor. Say, I want to be more like Christ. <laughs> I want to be more like Christ. <coughs> Say it a little louder, church. Come on. I want to be more like Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let them know. Don't keep it a secret. <laughs> but that's what his passion was all about. I want to be more like Christ. First Peter chapter 2.21, it says this. It says that to you who were called because Christ suffered for you, Leaving you, I want you to take your fingers, point at yourself for a moment. It says, leaving you as an example. Huh. Leaving you as an example. Leaving you as an example. All of you, leaving you as an example that you should follow in his steps. If you want to be more like Christ, you need to follow in his steps. And Paul wanted to, more than anything to be more like Christ. If you're a believer in the house of God today, and you want what Paul wants, let's just say a big amen to that. Amen. amen, amen. Because the ultimate purpose that you can have in your life is this. To be more like the one who created and formed you even before you were even a thought. To be more like the one who sacrificed everything that he had on a bloody cross for you. To be more like the one who took time out when no one else would to come and save you in your darkest hour. To be more like the one who never complained about the cross, who never worried about the cross, always trusted God the Father for his will in his life. And to be more like the one who never looked back, but always looked ahead to see you in the picture and me. To be more like Christ. Today we're celebrating our birthday. Amen. And I love it. But today I want you to see that today should be the start, not just of a birthday, but a, a complete different way of thinking. To be more like Christ. What does that mean? It means that when we celebrate our birthday next year, we're going to celebrate with some testimonies of how we grew from this year to last year. Amen. That's what that means. It means we're going to celebrate knowing that God is still working. He's still being a way maker. Come on, guys. Miracle work. A promise keeper. A light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That's who he is. That's who he is. Let's stand today. our hands. Lord, we give you praise and thanks today because we've come into your house to celebrate. We've come into your house to celebrate and we celebrate all the many ways in which you have worked and moved in our lives. Lord, we're here together today 
to understand that there's a prize that's better than anything that we could ever get, any sort of amount of money, any sort of resource, any sort of uh, worldly possession that we can think that we can own. There's a prize, and that prize is knowing you. And I'm going to give you praise today because we can come to know you and experience you and be transformed by you, be sanctified by you, to be set apart all by you. <laughs> and so today, as we leave this place today, Lord, help us to have more of you. Help us to set our eyes on you as the prize. I pray this in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 So today, as you leave, we had all kinds of prizes. But there's one prize, one prize that we should all strive for, and that is Jesus Christ. I hope you leave today in his grace and love and peace. You guys are dismissed. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. If you would like to connect with me or Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, you can find us on Facebook at Greencastle Nazarene and also on our website, www.greencastlenazarene.com. May you have a blessed and wonderful day in the Lord.